Thanks for staying with us. Our panelists are all lined up and ready to go. So let's convene the summit. I'd like to introduce our three guests that we have with us today from Dubai, Trimmel Gomes, political commentator and owner of Gomes Media, as well as Christy Hutchinson, CEO and founder of Women Fighting for America from Jacksonville, Florida. And here in our Tel Aviv studios, Mark Schulman, the editor-in-chief of History Central and an editor and columnist for Newsweek. Thank you all so very much for joining us. I'm looking forward to getting into this debate, a problem that has continued throughout the decades, immigration in America. America. Why now has it entered the headlines? Let's take a look. The concrete jungle where dreams are made of, New York, is in a state of emergency. But not from a terror attack or a pandemic, but rather because of the work of other US states. The New York mayor, Eric Adams, announced a state of emergency due to an influx of migrants from South and Central America who were being transported in their thousands from the Republican-led states of Texas, Arizona and Florida. More than 17,000 have arrived in Democratic states since April and, according to Adams, five or six buses filled with migrants are arriving daily in New York. Last month, Two planes of migrants from Florida were sent to Martha's Vineyard, an affluent area in the northeast of the USA. Texas, Arizona and Florida claim the migrants are being sent to so-called sanctuary jurisdictions which fail to enforce migrant laws. This is being done as a protest against Joe Biden's immigration policy on the southern border with Mexico, causing the influx into the US to reach record highs this year, and also causing havoc for the state's social services, such as schools and hospitals. But is it morally okay to use these migrants as human pawns to protest the government? Should Texas, Arizona and Florida face a legal challenge, or is this all above board? How should the U.S. deal with the migrant crisis? So let's get to it by starting off with a lightning round. 30 seconds to make your case and then we'll open up the floor. How should the United States deal with the migrant crisis? Mark Schulman, start us off. The best way to deal with the migrant crisis is, number one, increase radically legal immigration. That's one of the major factors. The United States needs immigrants, desperately needs immigrants in terms of economics. Increase the legal immigration. We have a real problem, though, with asylum seekers because we assigned to the United Nations asylum law, so we have to find a way around that. But the basic, best way of doing this, increase legal immigration, and then you won't have illegal immigration. Christy Hutchinson, your thoughts, 30 seconds? Well, first of all, we need to define it's it's not a migration. First of all, these aren't geese and these aren't water buffalo migrating. These are illegals coming into a sovereign country. You don't have borders. You don't have a sovereign country without those borders. Uh, to tackle this invasion, this planned invasion into a sovereign nation, we already have a lot of um, uh, laws already on the books that protect all of these migrants and the illegals coming into our nation. We need to uphold those laws and we need to do this legally. We have a um, president of the United States whose policies are influxing and hurting those individuals coming into this country. Christy, I want to come back to President Biden's policies, but first I'd like to give Trimble Gomes a, a chance to give his 30 seconds on this. The United States could deal with the migrant crisis by getting Congress to pass comprehensive immigration reform. That task has been left to squander as politicians use the issue to, as political gain to villainize asylum seekers and in many cases overblowing the issue and at worst manufacturing the issue. You have people chartering planes. You're hearing of that earlier in the clip, chartering planes and busing these people who are seeking safety to other states, creating a crisis instead of dealing with this individual cases and making sure that they, they, they get what they're looking for, which is safety. Right, and I want to open up the floor by asking Christy to start off on this next question. I want to specifically look at President Joe Biden. This has been an issue that's been around for decades. It's not abating and neither is the criticism. So my question is, has Joe Biden's policies on immigration failed? 
Absolutely, yes, they have failed. But from from the legal perspective of American citizens, it, it has failed them, and it has also failed those seeking to come into this country. Uh, however, his policies haven't failed his uh, the administration's goals. So to fail something, you have to understand what the goals are of an administration. The policies, as far as he's concerned, is actually uh, working perfectly fine. But it's bringing down America. It's destabilizing our nation and our country. We cannot afford to bring in over, by the way, over 5 million illegals since this president took office. And I believe the numbers are a lot higher than that because those numbers don't take into the account the getaways. It is straining a system. And I do want to touch really quick on uh, the states, the red states they're trying to attack. And and uh, we, under this administration, they were flying in and shipping illegals in the middle of the night to all over the United States of America. So Governor DeSantis and Abbott and Ducey aren't any new to this. This administration has been um, aiding and abetting trafficking for two years since he took office. I've been down personally at the border for over two years in the trenches following the movements of his policies, and they are emboldening the drug cartels. The drug cartels are making over $13 billion a year on the backs of these illegals trying to come into this country. They're exploiting them, they're being raped, they're being murdered, they're being sold into human trafficking. And it's all because of the policies of this administration. Okay, this is already nonsense, because first of all, let's make it very clear. These people are not illegal, they're asylum seekers. Now, there's a real problem with asylum seekers, because the law states that if you're an asylum seeker and you come into the United States, if you reach American soil, you can request asylum. And then unfortunately, instead of uh, you know, instead of getting 100 new judges or 200 new judges to make decisions right away, we have this backlog of cases that is ridiculously long. So there's a real problem. The solution is not to call them illegal. It's not to talk about invasion. There's no invasion. Many of the number of five million people counted twice and three times. Uh, it's a problem. There's no question. It's a problem controlling a border when you have an issue of asylum. You need to gain control. I agree that we need to have a comprehensive immigration reform. But America needs immigrants. Let's not get away from that fact. America needs immigrants desperately. There's a shortage at this point because legal immigration was cut tre tremendously during the time of President Trump. Now there are not enough legal immigrants in the United States, and it's hurting economically very strongly. So the issue is not is how do you manage to to balance all these needs. It's not a policy. I mean, there's the impression that the Biden administration wants all these people to come. The Biden administration is doing the same problems, is dealing with the same problems that every previous administration has dealt with. Poor people want to come to America. Right. Once upon a time, America doors were open. Today, they're not. I want to jump into the conversation and just bounce something off here because you've both mentioned some interesting points and I'm hoping that Trimmel will, will join in the conversation here where you mentioned that we are having an issue physically with these people coming in, but what about the American public? Is the American public seeing this as sympathy for these migrants, or is there sort of this backlash from them of whatever economic problems they're running away from, they are bringing to possibly America? Trimmel, can you start us off? Sure, I'd like to say like Ameri migrants who are risking their lives to, to land in the USA proves that America remains a beacon of hope and prosperity for many seeking uh, a better way of living. And that's what's happening here. Um, as far as how the, the American perception of this issue, you heard from your guests who, again, as I mentioned earlier, this, this overemphasis of fear mongering about um, what the brand of America is all about. It's a, it's a nation of immigrants. People People coming to this country. It's very contradictory now to, to, to do the opposite and say you're not allowed to come in here. Um, that's what is etched on the Statue of Liberty. So it's just this fear mongering that we're seeing from many. There was not an issue until we saw the, the flying of migrants to different states. Um, that issue was manufactured. These Republican governors gathered together and decided this was a plan to, to ahead of the midterms, to have this issue um, take over the headlines. So many of these issues is, is, is just created. Christy, I America's, see you shaking America's your head there. Mark, I just want to jump to Christy. I see you shaking her head. Well, first of all, I've spent the last two and a half years with me and my team down at the southern border, um, on the border. I've traveled all 3,000 miles of border on both sides in Mexico and in the United States and other in Central America. And I, I'm not, I'd love to find out if the guests have actually been down there. Uh, this issue, since the two there. weeks into the Biden, since two, besides a photo op, this issue, besides two weeks into the Biden administration, has been a huge problem. And I'm going to address the asylum seeker. 
Um, even the own Border Patrol and uh, protection agencies, less than 14 percent, less than 14 percent coming over qualify under the, the claims of fear, credible claims of fear into another country. So what about the whole other percentage of the other ones coming here and flooding into the United States? It's because they're being brought over here. They're given freebies. They're given all sorts of carte blanche by this administration, by the United Nations, by NGOs, etc., to come into our country. By the way, I'm an I'm a immigrant. My family, I'm a Russian Jew. My family fled Stalin. We came here, we're written in Ellis Island. I believe in legal, proper immigration. I've been down at the border. Ellis Island was closed by the time you came, girls. but okay. My my team has rescued little girls and little boys, literally from the cartels, who are being traded and sold into the sex slave industry. This administration, this isn't political for me. This is in a humanitarian crisis at the border. Women, children, and men are being raped, killed, sold into labor slavery, sex slavery, murdered for their organs. I could go on and on. We have the videos to prove it. I've got the proof. So this administration's policies not only are harming Americans. Okay, can, I, can I ask what your policy would be? Seeking. Can I, can I ask what your policy would we, be? You're, you're now in charge. Absolutely. What is your policy? What's your solution? So we have legal immigration laws on the books. Yes, do they need to be tweaked? Yes, do they need to be uh, revamped? Absolutely, they do. We need to speed up the process, the, the red tape, the paperwork. All of those things need to be addressed. But the rightful thing to do to protect both those coming into America through the southern and northern borders illegally, there's reasons why we do this legally to protect them. And again, this isn't political for me. President Trump's policies weren't perfect, but they were saving lives. Okay, I, again, I, I didn't hear a solution to your in, in your what you had to say. The reality is there has been a we problem need to of immigration. We speed up our processes. Okay, I think everyone agrees with that. Now, all we need is Congress to allocate the money in order to do that, but the Congress won't allocate the money to do that because the Senate won't pass a comprehensive immigration reform because Republicans have blocked it time and time again. That's the reality. There is no, there's been no comprehensive That's immigration reform now for, for, for two decades. It's necessary. We, everyone agrees with it. Uh, those are things that will help solve the problem. There's also, of course, war, you know, world economic issues that make things very difficult. But that's the reality. The United States has always had a had a immigrants. It's a nation of immigrants. And it's always had people against immigration. Going back to the Do Nothing Party in the 1880s, were against Catholic immigrants when the were against the Irish because they were afraid the Catholics were going to take over. And then eventually the Do Nothings won in 1921. The gates of the United States were closed because of a fear of immigration. And that's part of the reason so many Jews would die in the Holocaust because the gates of America were closed. And it wasn't until 1960 that the gates were opened again. Not only is this a pressing problem, but it also seems to coincide with the timing of elections, which to, for many seems like a trend, for others it seems sort of like a coincidence. But there is no denying, as all of you have mentioned, and there is some common ground there, I believe, that we can agree on, that this has been a problem over decades throughout all the administrations that is yet to find a viable, credible, and agreeable, in a sense, solution that we can put forward and move. Um, we are running out of time, but I do want our panelists to stay with us just so we can continue the conversation. And apparently it's not only affecting American borders, but it also crosses borders and affects this part of the world, particularly in Europe. So stay with us, our amazing panelists. We'll be back after a short break. Don't go anywhere. We've got much more to debate.